Okay, so before starting this lesson, I just want to let you know that this lesson is coming from this book. And this is Microsoft's number one selling Excel book. And they asked Dr. Winston to write it. And the reason I'm telling you this isn't to buy the book. The content's free. Like we're, we're posting YouTube videos, right? It's more to let you know that you're getting a, a world-class education if you just watch the content. If the video's there, just watch the whole thing. And if you have any questions, just let us know. We're more than happy to help. The only requirement, if I answer the question what Dr. Winston does, is that we can make the video so more people can, um, can watch it, right? So we can have the solution for you guys and girls, and then we can post it to where other people can find it valuable. And again, uh, underneath in the description, there are going to be the start files and the ending files, meaning you can download them. No email, you, can, you don't need anything. Just click on the link, you'll automatically download the files and you can follow along and you can um, have the formulas in your spreadsheet or in um, Dr. Winston's spreadsheet. And then we do offer a free 21 day course. Again, the link is in the description or you can go to um, excelwithwayne.com slash uh, free. And so yeah, but uh, again, if you do like this video, if you could comment and if you could like it and subscribe, and the reason for this is not just to be notified because you will every time we post a video and we're trying to post, I don't know, we're trying to do three a week, but I'm gonna start making content as well and we should hopefully be able to do one a day. And, um, and so yeah, but also the bigger benefit is that if you think the content is valuable, then by liking and commenting and subscribing to the channel, um, more people will see it. The algorithm of YouTube will push the, the video to more people. And so we just want to make sure that we can reach as many people as we want. It's free. It's YouTube, right? So like the content is there. And so we hope you find it valuable. And again, if you have any questions, just go ahead and leave a comment and um, I'll be monitoring it. And I'm more than happy to help, more than happy to answer. But uh, yeah, hope you enjoyed the video. Sometimes you want to use arrows to see trends. For example, if you wanted to see if your salesperson had higher, lower, or same sales from one month to the next, you can use an up, down, or side arrow. This is important because anytime you can take data sets and get the insights that are easier to understand, you will save your team time and money. Dr. Winston solves this problem in a very unique way. He shows how to change the font into wingdings, which shows the arrows based on the text. In the end, he shows how to replace the text with an up, down, and sideways arrow. Recall when we discussed conditional formatting, we talked about putting in icon sets, like an up arrow when something was a large number, a good, a down arrow when something was bad, and a flat arrow if something was in the middle. Well, there's another way to do this without Excel's built-in icon sets that can prove convenient. It doesn't look quite as nice, but it lets you have more power over how your icon sets look. And the key idea is the following. Okay, if you use, let's look down here, letters of the alphabet, A through Z. When you change the font to Wingdings 3, they look like this. So the interesting thing is, if you've got a P, Q, or U, see what you get. A P could be an up arrowhead, a Q a down arrowhead, and a U a flat arrowhead. You've got H, I, and G, and you change the font to Wingdings 3. Uh, H would be an up arrowhead, I would be a down arrowhead, and G would be a flat arrowhead. Okay? So you can create with if statements conditions that create, let's say, we'll do an H, I, or G. And H is when something is good, and I when something is bad. A G when something's in the middle, and we can customize how we create those, you'll see in a minute. And then we just change where the H, I, and G go to the font Wingdings 3, and then we've got icons, like right here. So let's talk about the problem. We've got our salespeople, famous people. Okay, Kevin Durant, Mello, Michael Vick, Aaron Rodgers. Okay, we used to date Vanessa from Gossip Girl, and now I think it's Olivia Munn, but that will probably change by the time we start uh, showing these videos. But let's suppose these are your salespeople, and here's the units they sold. And, you know, when you want to evaluate salespeople over time, you want to see how they rank, uh, basically, from month to month. Now. I'm in shock here because I see Australia beat Brazil in the Women's World Cup, so I need to pause for a minute really surprised by that outcome. Brazil has such a reputation in soccer. Probably good for the U.S., bad for Brazil. Okay, so for instance, LeBron sold 85, uh, say, vacuum cleaners in January, 66 in February. 
etc. Okay, so I want to look at how each salesperson ranked each month, and then what I can say is, did their rank get worse or better from month to month? In other words, if your rank dropped among the salespeople, you're on a downward trend. If your rank got better, you're on an upper trend. So like, look at Dirk Nowitzki, he'll have four up arrows. Or he improved his rank each month. Or I could have, if you follow the Jack Welch or the GE personnel evaluation system, which I don't like, people in the top 10%, you could put an up arrow, bottom 10% a down arrow, and the middle 80% a flat arrow. And you could see with these icons, if somebody is in the has a down arrow for, let's say, six straight months, that's pretty bad. And you might want to call them in and try and improve the performance. They have an up arrow for six straight months. They're doing really well. But it makes it really easy to summarize data that changes over time, this technique. And it's much harder to do. What we're accomplishing in this file sales tractor is much harder to do with the icon sets. OK, so you've got the actual sales data. So now you need to know how each uh, salesperson ranks during the month. That's the famous rank function. So I say, how, let's rank E6 as LeBron's January sales in column E. You need to dollar sign column the 6 through 20, but not the E. Because when you copy it across, you want the E to change to F. But you, if you don't dollar sign the 6 through 20, then when you go down here, you'd see a 7 through 21. OK. So this formula gets copied across through May. And then the, the 0 means that the person with the uh, best number will get a 1. So Aaron Rodgers was number one in January. Michael Vick was number one in February. So I now have the rank of each person. Now I can use an if statement to say, how do you know if somebody did better in February than January, if their number was lower? So if the rank in February, OK, now that is wing dings three. Doesn't make any sense. So let's change it back to English. And then we'll go back to wing dings three. So if I go home here, and I am at home, and I do times for amount. OK, so like, look at the formula. OK, if February's rank was less than January's rank, you did better. So you would get an H for an up arrow. If February's rank was higher than January's rank, you did worse. You would get a down arrow. Otherwise, you stayed the same. OK, and just copy that across. And then it would do March compared to April. And finally, it would do May compared to uh, April that March compared to February, and this would be May compared to April. Now I can just change the font to Wingdings 3. So I go home, Wingdings 3. I don't know what Wingdings 1 and 2 do, but Wingdings 3 will do the job. OK, now I've got how the person performed. So Dirk Nowitzki was improving every month. Is there anybody who was doing, had all down arrows? I don't know off the top of my head. Uh, see anybody who got worse every month, but I could change the numbers to make that happen. But you could see a trend that Dirk Nowitzki was improving every month. Most of these people, they get worse, they get better, which is just random variation, which is what you'd expect. But if I had made this be P, Q, and U, I would get those little arrowheads, which I think actually probably look nicer. And I can also have a half up arrow and a half down arrow. There's a half down arrow, and there's a half... Uh, there's a half up arrow. So I could have the five arrow icon sets if I want to have that, which is really pretty cool. And so again, I could do the Jack Welch or GE philosophy at the top 10% with the percentile function. If somebody ranked in the top 10%, the percentile was greater than 0.9. If there were a lot of salespeople, give them an up arrow. If the percentile was less than the 10th percentile of that column, give them a down arrow. Otherwise, give them a flat arrow. So I think you'll find that very useful. It's really a cool way to create your own icon sets. They don't look perfect, but basically they'll give you a quick picture of how things are moving up or down over time. All right, so now that you watched the video, you know, we hope you like this stuff. I mean, we're gonna be posting a lot of content, hopefully. Um, the goal is to do two to three of Dr. Winston's videos a week, and then three to four um, or five. You know, the goal is one a day, so seven of me producing uh, content or me answering questions, you know, from people and stuff like that. I mean, you, you guys probably don't know me and girls, uh, but I'm an alumni of Dr. Winston's. I am a consultant in Excel. I, you know, I do this stuff for a living. And so, yeah, if you have any questions on this or in general, leave a comment, like, subscribe, you know, all that stuff. Uh, not, not so much just so you get a update, but more because 
you know, if you think this video is good or you like the content and you think other people will like the content as you like and as you comment and as you subscribe, uh, YouTube, the algorithm is going to push this to other people. It's going gonna, it's gonna to be on their homepage, you know, people searches and stuff like that. And so our goal is to get this content out, you know, to as many people as possible. I mean, it's free, um, but it's really, really good. Um, I am an alumni, again, of Dr. Winston's and I can personally, you know, vouch for it. Uh, because I, I, I was in his classes. I took all of his classes. I took his marketing analytics. I took uh, his data modeling classes, stats classes, financial anal analytics class. Like I've done it all. And it's just amazing content. And the challenge with YouTube is there's not in-depth content. As to where with this, you have really, really in-depth content. And so, yeah, any questions, let me know. Leave a comment, and I'll be there to help. Thanks.